Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from the Cargo Lux maintenance hangar. And in the background, the plane that yet again has impressed us all. In today's video, we'll be looking on how a British Airways Boeing 747 broke the transatlantic speed record from New York JFK to London Heathrow. How did she do it? And what has that got to do with a conveyor belt? You'll see in a minute. So let's do this real fast and let's get started. Any ground, jet with 553, ready taxi with Alpha. Jet with 553, splendid news. Where are we starting this exciting mission from? With a huge 220 knots wind speed in the core of the polar jet stream, the weather on the 8th of February 2020 made it a record breaking day for transatlantic flights. Golf Charlie India Victor Papa, a British Airways Boeing 747 flying from New York to London, flew the normally six and a half hour flight in just four hours and 56 minutes, arriving a massive 80 minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> Strong polar jet streams across the North Atlantic are nothing out of the ordinary. In fact, flight crews regularly use a set of North Atlantic tracks when making a transatlantic crossing, which are determined daily using information of jet streams. Now, February the 8th, however, was special due to a combination of meteorological factors which led to this high speed record. It's important to remember that despite the 747 reaching a peak ground speed of 760 knots, respectively 825 miles per hour, almost 130 knots faster than the speed of sound at flight level 350, it did not at any point fly supersonic. And your immediate question is how? The reason why the Queen of the Skies stayed on the slower side of the sound barrier is due to the difference between the true airspeed and the ground speed. Now, the definition of true airspeed, the speed of the aircraft relative to the air mass surrounding it. Now, on this flight, the crew saw a speed of Mach 0.85, which at flight level 350 roughly equals to a true airspeed of 490 knots. Please do not mistake this speed with the speed on the primary flight display. That's the indicated airspeed. That's a whole nother story. Okay, let's simplify true airspeed. Now picture yourself driving with your car at 60 miles per hour. So your speedometer will show 60 miles per hour. Now let's put your car on a conveyor belt that runs at 40 miles per hour. Engine shut off and you are now traveling at 40 miles per hour although your speedometer is showing zero because your tires are not moving. Now let's start the engine and you speed up to 60 miles per hour. How fast are you physically going? Correct, 40 plus 60 equals 100 miles per hour, although your speedometer or true airspeed is only showing 60 miles per hour. Now the other important speed is the ground speed of an aircraft, which is simply put the wind component added in case of a tailwind or subtracted in case of a headwind of the true airspeed. So in case of the 8th of February, a strong tailwind was causing a higher ground speed. Now important notes, the wind never affects the true airspeed only the ground speed of the aircraft. Now this means that despite the ground speed passing the speed of sound, at no point did the airflow relative to the aircraft pass over the sound barrier, leaving the aircraft subsonic for the flight. Does that make sense? Now to come back to our car and conveyor belt scenario, the simplest way of understanding what the ground speed is Think of the sun creating a shadow of the plane or car on the ground. If you could measure the speed of the shadow traveling over the ground, that's your actual ground speed. Now on the BA flight 112, the true airspeed of 496 knots plus the tailwind of 220 knots led to a ground speed of 760 knots, respectively 825 miles per hour. Yep. It's as simple as that. <laughs> now let's talk about the fuel economy and the environmental impact of that flight. Now in cruise, the 747-400 burns approximately 12 tons of fuel per hour, 
meaning that the 80 minutes gained equals approximately 16 tons worth of fuel saved thanks to the strong jet stream. Now that's a cost saving of almost eight and a half thousand dollars. Also, one ton of jet A1 burned releases 3.15 tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, meaning that this flight alone saved just over 50 tons worth of CO2 that's the equivalent of 8.5 average homes electricity use for a whole year or 25 tons of coal burned. Again, <laughs> this however would not be the case if we were to be flying into the other direction that day. So from London to New York, the strong headwinds would have caused a ground speed as low as 280 knots and would increase the flight time to almost eight hours. That's a difference in speed between the two flights of 440 knots. I am pretty sure the crew must have been completely blown away by the numbers during the flight. Now, funny enough, once that record was set, a few other airlines such as Virgin Atlantic were very close in breaking the record again within a few days with their more modern Airbus A350-1000, but just missed it by one minute. <laughs> Nevertheless, putting aside the benefits of these massive tailwinds, one of the dangers of flying in the vicinity of these high-speed jet streams is the risk of clear air turbulence. Now, hence the name, these turbulence cannot be seen or detected by most modern weather radars, so pilots must rely on the reports from previous aircrafts to avoid them. Now, jet streams are not always turbulent, but aircraft using strong tailwinds will often experience light or even moderate turbulence during periods of the flight. Now, these turbulence can also be severe in places and may cause injury to passengers or crew. In situations as this, the safety of the flight always comes above the speed, economy or environmental impact. And well, one plane that rarely worried about turbulence as she always flew above the weather and above any other commercial airliner will hold the transatlantic speed record for a few more years for sure, which was broken on the 7th of February 1996 at a time of two hours and 53 minutes, traveling at twice the speed of sound, British Airways Concorde. Yes, I admit she did it supersonic, so technically she's in a class of her own. But if you want to learn more about this magnificent plane, watch this video right here. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. And follow my Instagram account. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. See you next week. Your Captain Joe. <laughs>